Y'all may be asking, what exactly does this have to do with this video? Absolutely nothing at all. I just wanted to take some time to appreciate some fine arts with the boys. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace and this is a Princess Connect video. And today we're gonna to be talking about the upcoming, actually already released unique equipments. These ones are over here, as well as the upcoming Summer Batch 2 unique equipments. Uh, it's gonna be a short one, but a good one. And so to kick things off, let's have a look at the batch that has already been released. And this one over here, Kasumi Nanaka, as well as Ruka. Starting off with Kasumi, we have a high craft priority and a level medium to no. Ooh. Now, for those of you who don't really use Kasumi or don't really know what she's for, uh, there are two main massive utilities of her. The first in which she is a massive PvP unit. She is so freaking annoying because she just like messes people up with binds and stuns and defense downs and slows and whatever. And for this kind of Kasumi, you do want her at five stars. You do want her to be doing that core disruption, but she's got to also survive and do a bit of damage, right? On the other hand, she is also used very, very heavily in CB. And when she is being used in CB, she is required at three stars, as well as some like really niche equipment levels. So if you are intending on using Kasumi for CB, I would say even from a star and an equipment level, just don't really touch her yet until we get there. She is certainly gonna be used for the loops. However, if you don't intend to do the loops, then I would freaking just go like slam it Sammy and then go the whole hog. And hopefully you can cuck a lot of people in PVP. However, this is the UE video. Let's talk about the UE itself. So the 35% going up to 50% for the UE AOE damage, fantastic. However, What's even better is that the bind is now scaling, which scales on the target's increases. What this means is that she could actually stun for up to one second more and then without the UE, 2.5 seconds going up to 3.5 seconds. And as a disruptor, as somebody who is stalling like the rest of the enemy team and trying to just cuck them so that your team can get all of their skills off first, that is a freaking godsend. In terms of the unique equipment levels, you can see there is the P defense, there is the M defense, and it actually gets a little bit high. So it's for this reason that there is this big fat red no, and a big fat red do not level UE, especially for CB. Because as you guys all know, hopefully, P defense, M defense, HP, all of these defensive stats, they affect the TP gain, which is going to certainly affect the loops. However, I did want to reiterate, if you don't intend on doing loops, just slam it and you can use her in PVP, now extra fun. Secondly, we have Nanaka over here. So Nanaka is really interesting in that I would say craft medium priority and level medium priority is pretty on point considering she is a very, very strong single target mage. Now previously, she was actually used a fair bit in countering the Muimi comps. However, Muimi isn't actually used on defense like at all anymore. And so if you do encounter those comps because perhaps you're in a later PA or BA bracket, then you could definitely be using Nanaka. So I'm talking like uh, Lima, New Year's Ray, Muimi, and then some kind of turbo, whether it be like Saren or Yukari and Yuki. However, generally speaking, you're not gonna be seeing that on defense anymore. And so what Miss Niara has over here at CB mainly is pretty much correct. If you are missing like Hyoka or Skiaru or possibly Ilya, and Nanaka is actually an appropriate replacement because because as you can see, she does the magical defense down, which is getting boosted by the UE from 48 up to 80, and it's gonna continue scaling. But not only that, she is actually getting fantastic stats from the leveling up, from attack and crit going up to attack and crit again, but just more of it, right? And so my advice would be that if you are missing any mages, so if I came over to some of these uh, CN timelines over here, and then I type Nanaka's name over here, you will see that there are 19 of the timelines that actually incorporate her. If I go forward a little bit this one has two this one has 25 this one has two this one has 20 and she is actually used quite a fair bit 33 there are options of which nanaka is a fantastic option and considering her shards just dropped in the battle arena i think that well i mean personally i'm going to be building nanaka especially because i do not have an next we have ruka who is quite interesting because she is used like kind of everywhere if you can fit her in however from a cb point of view you can see over here we have the big red low as well and then level ue just as needed and to be honest nowadays i don't actually see Ruka too much if at all in PvP and so I would probably say if you're going to use her at all you're probably going to be using her in CB for this one over here debuffs their P defense by 24 for 12 seconds and then I would also leave the UE at level 1 or level 30 or whatever if I had a Ruka. <laughs> 
However, with this increased multiplier for the skill one, I do think that she might make a comeback, especially on the blind teams for PA, but mm, to be honest, there are a lot better options now. So that covers all of the UEs that just got released. Let's move on to the ones that are upcoming, I would say probably in the next like five to 10 days. And so on this side of things, we're gonna kick things off with Sama Tamaki, who has a high craft priority as well as a high level priority. And in terms of context, she is used in CB mainly. I think this is spot on. And the reason that she is so good in CB is because she buffs her own P attack by 3,200 for 12 seconds. That is massive, massive juice. On top of that, she is also stealing TP, which means that she is gaining TP to hopefully be able to get more UBs off. This does come with a downside where some bosses where you're relying on them to do AOE attacks on you to gain TP, uh, it kind of like cucks that plan. However, generally speaking, I would say that Summer Tamaki is used quite a fair bit. So, so as you can see over here, in the era of, I think that's a six star Kokoro, as well as the Halloween Mimi, she is being used in 73 different comps. Let me come back, seven comps over here, 61 comps in the month before, and then the month before that, 34 comps coming back closer and closer, 12, and then 49 in the upcoming CB. So yes, I would say that Summer Tamaki UE craft high priority, level high priority, considering she's getting more attack and more crit and TP boost. However, do remember that Summer Tamaki is like a straightforward just DPS unit. You're not going to find very much use for PvP. Next, we have Summer Mifuyu, who is a pretty interesting character considering when last year she was released, everyone was like, she kind of doo-doo. However, with her unique equipment, she makes a comeback where her AOE damage is going to get boosted from 35% up to 250. And if I start drawing comparisons from S Mifuyu over to Mimi, you will realize where her utility is, and that is indeed in PvP mainly. Yes, you could definitely consider using her in the multi-target bosses, depending on how the loops and how Halloween Mimi works when we get down there. But generally speaking, we're going to be using her in PvP. More cleave. It, it doesn't stop here, guys. It just freaking does not stop. However, looking at the stats of the unique equipment, you'll see that the TP boost is going from 8 up to 23. Now, that is also going to be a massive factor for Summer Mifuyu, and it's going to boost this level priority up to high. However, generally speaking, from a resources management point of view, if you're not like a massive PvP main, you could consider just like not doing S Mifuyu at all. And then lastly, we do have the lovely Summer Suzume, who is going to be on a medium craft priority and then a low level priority. So Summer Suzume was used for like one CB when she came out. However, I think generally speaking, you're not going to see too much use from her only in solid staller on defense. That is probably where I would expect her and I would expect her generally speaking, only in the princess arena game mode in one of the hidden teams because stalls are just so easy to break nowadays. We just have so much damage with like the Muimi, the Christina, the Halloween Shinobu, Summer Kari, who just literally came out in which I do want to kind of showcase a clip. I'm going to keep talking and talking. Hopefully you guys do see a clip over there from post-production lace. You got it. But yes, I would say even with the UE in which she drops a field that buffs all defense by 135, uh, store meta is kind of like, Eesh. and so it's for that kind of reason, I would say that the craft priority of this one is probably actually low. However, with that, that I think that's actually all of the characters. So why don't we wrap this bad boy up? I got a secret question for you guys. Have you guys slammed any of these three UEs considering this video was a little bit late? And on the other hand, are you guys going to be pulling for the Summer Tamaki or the Summer Suzume reruns when they come back over? My guys, let me know down in the comments below. And if you do end up leaving a comment, I would really appreciate that. So thank you guys so much. If you did enjoy this video, please consider dropping a like on it, subscribing to the channel and turning on that notification bell. However, as your girl Summer Mifuyu once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.